Hi, today I'm going to talk about how I made a Ragnarok mask to go with my drift mask. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my project for today is this Ragnarok mask based on a character in Season 5 of Fortnite. And in my last project, I made a mask for another character, Drift, and I showed in my last project how I designed it in Adobe Illustrator, cut the parts on a laser cutter, and then painted it. And uh, when I did this, I got a lot of requests for Ragnarok, so that's why I'm doing it in this project. The back of the mask, and first of all, this is a piece of wall art designed to hang on a wall. It is not a mask that you wear. And the back of it is the same back that I created for the drift mask. The lights and the eyes are the same tea lights that I used in Drift. Because they are run with this remote control, and LEDs can be any color, at least RGB LEDs can be any color, I just picked pink for Drift and blue for Ragnarok. Now, I did just reach uh, level 100 in my battle pass, so I do have Ragnarok in the game, but I still need about 25,000 more experience points to get the mask. Uh, this is the version of the mask you get first. I do, I'm not doing the blue tipped version because frankly I don't think I'll ever get enough experience to get those. Um, oh, and the beard, you know, the blue beard that's actually attached to Ragnarok, not the mask, so it's not here. The real challenge of this mask is unlike Drift, which is a very stylized, relatively simple to paint, this is organic. It's a skull, it has horns, it has teeth. And the challenge is how do you take three levels of plywood and make them look three-dimensional? So that's really what I'm going to talk about in this episode. My reference photo for this project is a screenshot from the game. And you can see that the head is turned to the side a little bit. And I need to try to straighten that out to use as a reference in my drawing. So I select it and I go to Transform and select the Warp option. And that gives me a lot of flexibility about how to move different parts of the picture around. So this is the final result I ended up with and I can still only get the left hand side of it straight and I'm going to use that and then duplicate and flip it to make a symmetrical drawing. I did the image work in Photoshop. Now this is Illustrator and I make a copy of my drift drawing and I pull in my warped image and I pick the opacity setting and I take it down so that I can see through the image to the drift mask behind it. Now I can size and resize this so that the eyes line up perfectly with drift and this way I know that the back end of the mask will work for Ragnarok as well. I have many videos where I show how to use the pen tool to draw over a reference photo and I'll put those links here. You can see that the fit on the left hand side is pretty close, not so much on the right because that is symmetrical by taking the left hand side and flipping it. In my first pass I just draw what I see but then I have to break it out into three levels of plywood and these are the three pieces of the face that I created. The Ragnarok mask is quite a bit bigger than the drift mask and when I get my measuring tool and check the width I see that it's 12 and a half inches and my board is only 12 inches wide so I'm going to have to split that in half to cut it on the laser cutter. It takes two pieces of wood for this project. The first layer has the back of the face and some of the back components and then the second piece of wood has the top two layers of the face and the rest of the rings for the back. And this is what it looks like when the laser cutter is cutting my first sheet of wood. And here are the three pieces of wood that will make up the front of the mask. Before I start painting I have to glue the two halves together and let those dry. And then I have a nice reference photo close to me while I'm doing the painting. And this is the first level of painting. It's called base painting. I'm using Citadel Hobby paints and these are the four colors that go into the base. Base paints have a lot of pigment in them so that they cover up the wood with only a, a coat or two. Then you move on to the layer paints. And this is the first level of layer painting. I'm using two colors of bone, Ushapti Bone and Screaming Skull. I've used a pencil to draw in where the shadows will be and I use the darker color bone in the shadows and the lighter color bone 
in the highlighted areas. You keep building up this local color with progressively lighter layer paints. So now I'm using Screaming Skull and Pallid Witch Flesh and I add even more highlights based on the reference photo. Now it's time to blend in shadows and highlights. The thing about acrylic paints is they dry very quickly, so you have to add something to them to slow down that drying. In Citadel, that's called Lamian Medium, and I mix up some with my darkest brown Rhinox Hide and some with my white. And the method I use is called a two brush method. I use a pointed brush to draw a bead of, in this case, the dark color that I've mixed with Lamian Medium. And then I use a flat brush with just Lamian Medium in it to drag it down into a blend. Here in the center of the brow, I put it, put my bead line down and I can draw out both directions from that. So that's how you create shadows. I create highlights using my white mixture. I lay down a bead and here are the center of the horns and I blend two directions to kind of raise up that center. You put a highlight on the top of the skull where the light would be hitting and you also put highlights on the outer edges of the tusks and blend them towards the dark. Here at the tip of the horns I use a very small brush to draw a fine white line for a highlight and then the flat brush to do a little bit of highlighting on those uh, jagged edges. I use the dark mixture to put a little bit of a line between some of the teeth. And this is what the three layers of wood look like when they've been shaded. The assembly is very much like what I showed for the drift mask. You start by gluing together all the components of the back of the mask and you set them aside to dry. Then I glue the front part of the mask together and you have to be careful to not get glue uh, leaking out onto the paint job. I test my tea lights to make sure they work and to pick out a nice blue color for my mask. And when the components are dry, I glue them to the backboard of the mask. I've left openings above each of the tea lights so it's easy to get them in and out to change batteries. And I put my tea lights in place to make it easy to line up the front of the mask with the back so that it's perfectly aligned with the lights in the eyes. And that's the Ragnarok mask. Here it is hanging on the wall. And I really love those tea lights for the eyes. He'll make a great companion to drift. I have lots of other great projects for gaming and gamers, so if you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.